Hi folks, it's Madman back with another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about the Composer API and we're going to go into a little more detail about um, the different scenes, uh, the scene create, scene show, and scene hide functions within the Corona uh, API. So uh, this is a, uh, an app that we created in a, another Corona API tutorial I did previously. Um, here we've got two scenes. Uh, you click the red button, it switches to a new scene. You click the red button again, it switches back. Now this was a really simple version um, that used um, just the scene create function. Now today we're going to make a few changes that are going to require us to use the scene show and scene hide functions. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do uh, my plan here is to make this word Mazda a, an object that I can touch, grab, and move around the screen and respond to physics. So to get started, we're going to turn on the physics library. We're going to include physics here, local physics equals uh, require physics. We're not going to start physics just yet. Um, um, I'm also going to create a new uh, function though. Uh, it's going to be a drag function that's going to allow me to drag objects on the screen, drag, drag them around on the screen. And I handily have a uh, drag body snippet here. This is some code that I just keep handy because uh, you can just basically drag and drop that right into a, uh, your project and you'll be able to use that to uh, make things draggable on the screen. Okay, so now we are going to go into the scene create function. This is where we've um, we've added the background. That's the white background you see there. We've added the title, and that's the word Mazda you see up there, and a button which we use to uh, to change scenes with, and the event listener for that button as well. Now, um, what I'd like to do next is add an event listener for the title. I'm just going to put it just before this button object and I'm going to make it a touch listener and and I am going to invoke the drag body function so let's take a look that's the drag body function we're talking about and uh, so let's go ahead and save this and see what happens um, now nothing happens yet I get an error and the reason for that is I haven't started physics yet so um, let's go ahead and do that uh, in order to start physics, we're going to want to do that. Uh, I like to do it in scene show. So let's do that. Let's go into the will phase of scene show. Now, if you recall from the previous uh, tutorial, scene show, the will phase, um, is stuff that you want to execute just before the scene displays on the screen. So I'm going to... Uh, put in this physics start command and I'm going to set the physics gravity at this time as well. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that uh, is I don't want the default gravity of uh, 0, 9 .8, 9 .8 to be uh, in effect. Otherwise Mazda though, is going to drop off the screen. I don't want that to happen. Um, and then the next thing I need to do um, is add a body uh, to my title object. So title uh, physics dot add body and we're going to add it to our title object and uh, we're going to make it a dynamic physics body. Dynamic. Alright, now let's give that a shot and let's see what we get. Okay, that's good. So now we can drag the Mazda thing around on the screen. And I just toss it off the screen. Well, okay, so let's switch out. Now I've done nothing to the scene too here, so nothing, I can't click on this and do anything. Let's switch back. Oh look, Mazda is still off the screen. Now let's say I want that Mazda logo to go right back to where it was when I first started the app, when I switched back and forth between scenes that's where your scene show really comes into effect because unlike 
scene create, which only is run the first time an app is run, and it won't be run again. That's the default behavior of Corona. Um, you will need to use the scene show event, which is run every time you switch between uh, scenes. So when you come back to a scene, it's going to go through the scene show. And it does it twice. It does it once for the phase will and another one for the phase did. So, um, well, let's see. Why don't we reset the location of our title here in the scene uh, show, will phase. And again, we're doing it in the will phase because I want it to be done behind the scenes before the, uh, before the title is actually visible on the screen. So I'm going to just redefine the X and Y properties of the title to be uh, where it was originally. Uh, let's see, where did I have that? Display.content height times 0.3. So let's go ahead and save that and see what happens. Now I'm going to drag that, move it down the screen. Now I'm going to switch scenes, and then I'm going to go back. Oh, interesting. Let's do it again. And it does, in fact, go back. However, it's still rotating. And uh, we need to reset the rotation uh, property as well. So let's set the rotation property as well. And we'll set that to zero. Now that's not going to fix it because I'll save it and I'll show you why. Uh, we turn it, go back, see how it resets it, but it still continues to move. And I don't necessarily want it to be moving, I want it to be stationary. So how do I deal with that? Well, that's where scene hide comes into effect. Now, what happens here is whenever you exit a scene, whenever I click this button, um, this scene hide, effect, uh, scene hide function is executed. And it also has both a will phase and a did phase. Uh, the will phase is stuff that you want to happen before the scene is removed from view. And the did phase is once the scene has been removed from view, you want these things to happen. So in our case, um, we want to stop physics after the scene has been removed from view. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the phase equals did part of the scene hide function, and we're going to do physics dot stop. We're going to save that. Let's take a look now. We grab this, spin it, hide it, come back, and there it is. Let's try it again. Let's toss it off the screen. And we'll switch scenes, come back, and there it is again. Now you can see how these two uh, functions, the scene show and the scene hide, can help you reposition objects on the screen when you're switching back and forth between scenes. So if you imagine a game you're playing and you decide to uh, go to another scene or another level and then maybe you want to go back to a level you're not going to want the old level to be shown as it was when you finished it or when you left it you want it to be reset so that all the you know the objects are in the original positions so that's what this allows you to accomplish now let's go just a little bit further let's add audio to this um, let's go to the very top and I'm going to create a, a new uh, variable here called background track BG track. So we're going to load a background track in our scene create. Um, so after all the display objects, let's just uh, add this statement uh, BG track equals audio.load stream. I'm going to load a stream since it's going to be a background track and it's going to just stream endlessly. And we're going to call it, okay, we're going to play a file called loop.wave. And that's in my project folder. If you look here in this uh, folder, I've got this file right here. You can play it. Okay, 
So now that we've added this, um, we need to add the stuff to, uh, to play it. And that's normally, uh, you usually do that in the did phase of your scene show. It even tells you right here in comments, this is where you start timers, begin animation, start playing audio. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do an audio play. And I'll set the channel. And we're going to just have it loop indefinitely. All right. So let's go ahead and save it. OK, let's try restarting. And you can hear the tracks playing. Now, interesting. Now, let's say you wanted the track to change when you switch between these scenes. Well, we can do that. Um, you're going to have to stop your audio um, whenever you hide your scene. So here's how we accomplish that. We go over to the scene hide, and we're going to go to the um, phase equals will section. That's where you would do that. And um, you're going to do audio dot stop. Okay, let's do that and let's restart it and let's see what happens. Okay, restart. Okay, let's switch out. Okay, great. Stopped. Stop the audio. Let's go back. Okay, interesting. Switch back. Go back again. Okay. So my audio didn't rewind. So let's um, add a rewind command in here. Let's see if we can get that to happen. Okay. Okay, let's go back. Good. Now we've got the rewind working. Okay, great. Okay, so that's essentially how you use these scene show and scene hide functions. These are examples of when you would use those as opposed to just relying on scene create. Now let me show you what happens uh, if, let's say, we decide to start physics. Uh, not in scene show, but let's start it here in scene create. Uh, or even better, let's just start it outside of the scene where people typically do it. Uh, we'll just do it right here. And let's go ahead and switch and see if we see any change. Aha, look at that. Um, what happened was physics wasn't started the second time whenever that scene was reloaded. Um, and that's because we didn't have the physics start command in the scene show function. So there you run into trouble unless you adhere to those principles. So let's go back and let's uh, let's remove that and put it back where it belongs. So we'll go ahead back and put it here in the uh, will phase. Clean that up a little bit. Okay, good. So that's one example there. Um, let's say you wanted to uh, stop the music. Uh, we start playing the music here, not in the scene show, but we only we do it in the scene create. If you do it there, it'll still work the first time. Okay, we switch out, go back. It doesn't play again. That illustrates how scene create is not run when you switch back to the scene in the, any second, third, fourth times. It's only run that first time. So if we undo that uh, and just uh, put it back in to where we pulled it from, save that, switch back out, and there we go. It's all working. So I hope that helped. Uh, thanks for watching another one of my tutorials. And please check out the other tutorials on my channel, Madman's Mobile App Dev Tutorials channel. Thanks for watching.